Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. Welcome to the show, y'all. Look here. That first night, they made love. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That first night out, you you gonna get it in one way or the other, you know? So they got it in. And they got it in and in again and again, right? But when they were done, Shirley... Being the person that she is now, she's not that naive, eyes wide open young woman that she was before she went into prison. Like I said, she got that penitentiary spice on her now. She extra crispy. You feel what I'm saying? So she asking questions and she wants some answers. It don't matter if he's her husband. What's up with this habit you got? You know you're going to have to kick that. He raises up at the bed and he look at her. He said, not now. She said, if not now, when? And she raises up and she gets behind him, you know, and she's hugging on him and he feels the warmth of her body all over the, his back and whatnot. And she says, you going to do what you need to do for us. And she nibbles on his earlobe. You know how they do. Come on now, don't act like y'all don't know. Want to get to nibbling on your earlobe and stuff like that. And then you feel the warmth of her body all over the back of you. You know what I'm saying? All of that kind of stuff is going on. And then she's rubbing her hands all over your body. And them fingernails and scratching on you. Real soft now. Real tender though. You understand what I'm saying? Now all of a sudden he's like, like you know, under a spell or something like that. Like spin golly or something. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. You know what I mean? That type of thing, right? So he tells her he's trying. He's trying. And she, she assures him that she's going to help him. But he has to start tonight. Now, tomorrow, tonight, she said it's better to start now than to wait. Because she wants him to give her that baggie. She's not settling for anything else. And she said, where is it? And he's under that spell. And before you know it, he said, it's in my pocket. She stops exactly the second he says it. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, straight manipulation. Like I said, she extra crispy now. Straight out the penitentiary. She ain't playing with you. She went straight to his pants and got in and walked straight to the restroom and he was right behind her. And when she opened, ripped it open and poured it in that toilet, he about had a fit. Fell up against the wall and slid down the wall and he got his hands over his face and she turns around and looks at him. She says, I know. But it's going to get better. And he slid down that wall and he's sitting there. He's like, man, I don't know how I'm going to be able to do this. I don't know how I'm going to be able to do this. She said, we're going to do it together. Because when I say he sprung like Donkey Kong on that stuff, he has been, uh, he been rolling since she was gone. Trying to cope with the situation. Now, keep in mind now what I'm trying to tell you. She the one on the inside, he on the outside, and he tripping. He tripping. He the one get sprung. While she on the inside, she still smoked her little weed in there now and then, but she didn't get hooked like he did. The pressure was too much to bear. And in that moment, she realized that she had to be the backbone. So many of our women end up doing like this. And then we don't appreciate them. You feel me? Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. It takes both of us. You know? It takes two in that relationship, whatever your dynamic is, man, to hold each other up. I remember when I was in the Marine Corps, right? And we'd be out on a force march. A force march is right. You got your full backpack on. You got your... M16A1 or whatever the, the weapon of choice is at that particular time. And then when you finish marching, you get at the destination where you stop and you still got your backpack on. Instead of taking all that off, you and the person that you're next to in the line, y'all set back to back. And the reason you set back to back is because when you get ready to stand up, you push your bodies against each other and then you stand up. It's easier that way with all of that weight on you, right? And that's the same thing when you're in a relationship with somebody. Get back to back. Because when the heat comes, you got your partner's back and your partner got your back. And that's what it was going to take for them to kick this. You feel me? 
That's what it was going to take. And she let him know that. She got him up. She took him back to the bedroom and put it on him again and knocked him right on out. Because she knew he going to have to go to sleep. Because if he don't go to sleep, he going to sneak out that house and try to go get some. But she got to do what she got to do. She got to play her part. And she knows she going to have to be the backbone for the time being until he gets strong enough to hold his together on his own. She gets up out of the bed. She goes into the room. She checks on little Tim Jr. He's still knocked out. Still knocked out. See, he's feeling safe now. Both his parents are there and all this and that. And she wanted to be the first thing that he saw that particular morning that was coming when he opened his eyes, even though she was wore out and tired. And she was right there when he opened his eyes and he saw his mommy for the first time. Listen to me. He saw his mommy for the first time in that situation when he woke his eye, opened his eyes overnight. He had never seen her like that before. When he saw her, remember, she had on her penitentiary clothes. When he saw her coming home, she had on prison clothes that you were home. Now he's looking at his mommy. Her hair is all wild. You understand what I'm saying? You know, she looks like she's been in the bed. She got on a long shirt that comes down past her knees. You know what I'm saying? And he looks at it in his eyes. You know how baby, baby look like, who are you? And then he reaches his arms up and she picks him up and he smells his mother. He knows that's his mother. And now he's ready to eat. <laughs> that's what kids do. Once they recognize that everything's straight, they want to be fed. So she took him to the kitchen to prepare his meal. And about that time, Tim Sr. gets up and he comes into the kitchen and he's talking to him and he kisses Tim Jr. on the jaw and tell him everything was going to be okay now. And he's struggling. She said, how you feel? And he laughed and told her he was tired. But he was feeling too good. He's feeling real good. He thought he'd be able to make it, but it's just been a few hours. He hadn't a whole day behind him yet. And she said, what are your plans for today? He said, I got to go to work. And she said, yeah, I got to go look for a job. And she said, I'll take you. They had the same car, the same car. So she took him to work and she said, what time do you get off? And he told her, she said, I'll be here before that, waiting on you. But when she left, while she was riding through the town, her and Tim Jr., she saw Sam. And he turned and he followed her. She gets back to the house. He pulls up behind her, gets out of the car, walks over to her. And he tells her, said, look, you want me to be out of your life? You want me to leave you alone? You got to do something for me. And she said, what is that? He looked at her. He said, I want my stuff back. And she said, you want what back? And, she, and he told her, I got one more bag of, of, of diamonds and jewelry that y'all need to give me. He never gave it to me, and I want that back. It's thousands upon thousands of dollars worth of jewelry and diamonds. She had no idea that Tim hadn't given it back to him. She said, I'll see if he still has it, and if he has it, you'll get it. If not, don't you come around here no more. And if you come around here again, you're going to have a problem. And he looked at her and said, you're threatening me? Now again, like I said, she extra crispy now, y'all. Extra crispy. And she's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you take it how you want to. But it's going to be what it's going to be. And she said, I'm not playing with you. Listen to me, y'all. When you come up out there, Pentite, woo wee. Mm. Especially the female. Boy, they got that spice on them and they extra crispy. They ain't playing no game with nobody. And he looked at them and he knew what she meant. He knew what she meant. He got in the car. When it came time for her to go pick up Tim, she got there early. As soon as he got in the car, she said, how was your day? He said, I'm struggling. I just need a little something. She said, no, you get nothing. You're not finna go back to that. You're not gonna do that. He looks over into the back seat. He sees Tim uh, Jr. in the back seat, knocked out. Knocked out. So she tell him, look, where is his stuff at? And he said, what are you talking about? Where is Sam's stuff at? These diamonds he's talking about. He followed me home today. Tim said in the seat, he said, uh, I got him here. She said, when we get to the house, we're going to take little Tim Jr. 
over to my mother's, and then we're going to get that and get that back to him. We're done. He's got to go. We don't need him coming around. He looked at it and he said, I'm not giving him back. I'm not giving him nothing back. She said, what you mean you're not giving it back? You're giving it back so we can get on with our lives. He said, no, nah, we're going to take that and we're going to go on with our lives. We're going to take that, we're going to sell it, and we're going to move away and live our lives. He owes us this. She pauses. She pauses. And she thinks about the years, the couple of years that she spent in prison. She thinks about all that she's had to endure in prison. And she starts to wonder what her life would be like with a fresh start, money. She realizes that those same old thoughts that she had back in the day were still there. See, that acorn that had planted its roots in her heart hadn't been fully pulled out. See, she was still tempted by the prospect, the idea of living a better life for nothing. She didn't earn it. It was tempting to her. But see, those couple of years that she spent in prison away from her husband, away from her son, her son being born in prison and taken away from her, it showed her that even though the temptations might come up, something more to life than money, something more to life than living a comfortable life that you didn't deserve, you didn't earn. And she was looking at it when she was looking at her husband and her son. And she told him without hesitation, once the, the light bulb went off, she looked him straight in his eyes. She said, we're giving it back and we're done. Tim looked at her. He said, you got to be kidding me. You serious? And she said, I'm serious. So they went and dropped Tim Jr. off and they went to the spot. She made him dig it up, put it in the trunk, and on their way back to the house, he kept talking to her. And he told her, let's give it back tomorrow. We'll give it back tomorrow. See, Tim had already had somebody set up to buy it. He was just waiting on her to get out. He already had a buyer that was going to give him some good money. Good money for all of it. And there was no questions asked. But he had to get her off of it. She's insisting on giving it back. So when she goes into the house, she calls Sam to tell him to come over. Tim gets the diamonds and he leaves. And he gets down to the end of the street and he gets on the payphone and he calls the guy that's gonna buy him and tell him, come on now. If you don't come now, you're not getting them. So while Sam is on his way over to the house, Tim is making a deal with the person that's gonna buy him and the guy that's gonna buy him gets to Tim first and he sells them. And he gets like 60 racks. 60. Cause like I said, it's several, several tens of thousands of dollars worth of diamonds in this bag. Some of the stuff is worth that alone. Tens of thousands of dollars for some of them stones. And he gives them to this dude on the cheap. So when Sam gets there, Tim is walking up the street. No bag. She's looking at him. What you do? He said, it's gone. Sam overhears this and he ups that thing. He said, I want my stuff. And I want it today. You called me over here. You're playing games with me. I'm not playing with now one of y'all. And he tells him, get in the house. Both of them put the gun on them and tell them to get in the house. They go into the house, the apartment rather. Once they get into the apartment, he walks around to make sure ain't nobody else in the john. Nobody else in the john. And he walks back into the room and he sees little Tim. He's laying in the bed. Sleep. Because she had picked him up on the way back to the house. She now wishes she would have left him over there. 
she wishes she would have left her son with her parents because now he's in danger. She knew better. She knew better. Now, Sam, he sees the weakness. Don't forget, Sam ain't the same dude either. He ain't extra crispy because he ain't been behind that wall, right? But mm, he's street tough. Gritty, like some of that gravel. You never you ever picked up some gravel rock and see the sand in it and all the different types of stone or whatever? Yeah. That's Sam. Yeah, he's shitty gritty. You know what I'm saying? Just like that. Just like that. So he grabbed the boy, picks him up. The Tim don't know. He wake up and then fall right back to sleep looking at him. Sam got the pistol pointed at both of them. He said, when you get my stuff back, you get your son back. And he said, don't follow me either. He going to be all right, but I need my stuff. So he puts puts uh, Tim in the car. He walks out the, the apartment, puts Tim in the car, little Tim, and he drives off. And tells him, when you get my stuff, call me. Shirley panics, she freaks out, and she smacks him. What did you do? He looks at her, and he reaches behind his back. He had the money tucked down behind in his shirt. And he pulls the money out, he said, I sold it. I sold it all. And she knocks the money out of his hand. I don't want this money, I want my son. I want my son back. Tim Jr. Tim looks at him and said, Tim Jr. is going to be all right. We're going to get him back. And she grabbed him and said, how? What are you going to do? We got to get his stuff back. He said, I can't get his stuff back. It's not going to happen. I sold it. And if you want to know how this turns out, you're going to have to tune in to the next episode. This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. And I say peace, y'all.